Okay, here we go again. Oh, that wasn't as messy as I was expecting. So I think it's very clear to say that I'm a big fan of lip gloss, but that also doesn't mean that I'm not actually incredibly picky with my formulas. There are some formulas here that I'm actually not a big fan of. So in today's video, I wanted to walk you through my entire lip gloss collection. I'll give you quick reviews of all the different formulas, what ones I really feel like are my favorite, and the ones that are not so my favorite. So I'll walk you through all of these formulas. If you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and I hope that you will subscribe. All right, let's try to organize this. All right, my friends, Let's first start off with the Kosas Wet Lip Oil. This was certainly a lip gloss that when I first tried it, I was incredibly excited about it because I really enjoy a lip gloss that doesn't feel gloopy or thick on the lips. Combining a lip gloss and a lip oil was something that I was very interested in and that's something that Kosas wanted to do. Also, this packaging, I mean, we have to really cover that first because I think this is some of the cutest packaging that Kosas has come out with. But yeah, I was really excited to try out this formula. I actually have an entire review on it. By the way, if I've done an entire video dedicated to some of these formulas, I will link all of the reviews as well as all of the products I talk about today down in the description box for you guys. So the Kosas Wet Lip Oil is really interesting to me. I think the formula really is something of a hybrid between a lip gloss and a lip oil. You can see here, I have the shade Dip. It's actually not an incredibly, incredibly pigmented formula, which you will find out in this video that that is typically my preference. The formula is nice because it doesn't feel very oily and it also doesn't feel very sticky. I also think this shade dip is really pretty and natural for every day. It also smells like creamsicle, like an orange creamsicle, which I personally am a big fan of, that vanilla orange scent. As a whole, I think if you are a big fan of lip oils, but you want something with just a little bit more glossiness that's going to last a little bit longer on the lips, I think that this is a really great option. But if you're someone that really likes a lip gloss to kind of fill in the lines and give you an ultra, ultra glossy, glassy look to your lips, I don't think you're going to get that effect from this product. To me, this is way more subtle, good for like an everyday sort of product. Next up, we have some of my absolute favorite lip glosses, which are the Glossier lip glosses. I do have an entire video dedicated to these, but to refresh your memory, these are the three shades. I have the original here, which is a clear with just that little hint of pink. By the way, I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but I love a doe foot applicator that's like super bendy. It really kind of bends to the lips as you apply it. So that is the translucent shade. We also have the clear red shade, which I think is probably my favorite. It looks a little bit intimidating in the actual tube, but you have nothing to be intimidated by. This is actually just a beautiful everyday strawberry color that really washes over the lips beautifully. You can see it right there. It ends up giving the lips a little bit of a color, but it really makes the lips look healthy and hydrated. And then for those of you that really like glitter, they also have this holographic shade, which is just a translucent gloss with a bit of an iridescent shimmer throughout. Something that I absolutely love about Glossier lip glosses is just the overall effect that it gives my lips. I wear these two the most, but whether it's the clear or the red shade, it makes my lips look so healthy and plump. It will fill in every single lip line that I have to just leave me with an ultra glossy and glassy finish to my lips. I also don't find them sticky whatsoever. So I feel like it takes everything that I love about a classic lip gloss that's super sticky, but incredibly glassy and plumping on the lips without a lot of the stickiness that you would typically get, but they're so much more comfortable. I never feel like my lips are kind of sticking together, if that makes sense. Really a beautiful formula. And time for a sip of beer. 
I didn't know this was an ASMR channel, but I guess it is right now. So I actually did an entire video comparing all of the clear lip glosses that you can find at an affordable price. One that I think is really good for those of you that prefer a lip balm feel is the Wet n Wild Gloss. You can find it everywhere. And honestly, it's really easy to wear. If a lube <laughs> was a lip gloss. I'm sorry, that is just a terrible way to describe this. It's very basic. There aren't a lot of frills to it. It doesn't give your lips an incredible look to them. It gives them a very slight shine. It won't leave your lips feeling gross after you apply it. It's not going to last a long time, but it does get the job done. I think it will leave your lips with a little bit of shine, easy to reapply and wear. So I don't think it's a bad product. It is a little bit underwhelming for me. Here is the Wet n Wild Gloss. But then you have something like the e.l.f. Lip Lacquer. I feel like this formula is a little bit more of an elevated version of the Wet n Wild. The e.l.f. Lip Lacquer really feels incredibly balmy on the lips. It will give you shine, as you can see right there. But it isn't sticky at all. This is actually maybe one of the least sticky lip glosses I have ever worn. To me, it's more like a liquefied clear lip balm, but it will give you a little bit more shine than a traditional lip balm. Very easy to apply because this paddle applicator is also really comforting. And this is a very comforting product to have, especially if you find that your lips get very dry throughout the day. And rather than applying a lip balm, you would prefer to wear you know, a lip lacquer or a lip gloss like this, I think that this is a really good option. Something that I mentioned in the clear lip gloss video though, is that you don't get a ton of product with this. So though it is at a very affordable price, you don't get a lot of product. So that is something that I always like to remind people that watch my videos. Price per ounce is something that I always keep in mind. You actually get 0 0.08 ounces. Just as a reference with the Wet n Wild, you get 0.19. So you get double the product in this Wet n Wild than you do with the e.l.f. Let's quickly talk about this lip gloss from Flesh. This is their hot sauce lip gloss and I have the shade 325. Last summer when I was on vacation, in Chicago, I walked over to an Ulta that was near me and I picked up one of these. I had seen a lot of people talking about them and I'm really glad that I did one. Like now this just reminds me of vacation, which is always a comforting thing. Do you guys ever have purchases like that? Like you make a purchase on vacation and then that product always reminds you of like good memories. I, I definitely have some items in my collection that remind me of wherever I purchased them and where I was. So something I really love about this lip gloss is that you can see it gives you pigment, but the doe foot applicator is actually quite pointed. So you can get really clean and crisp lines if that's something that you want to achieve with your lip gloss. I think the shades were really well thought out. They're very flattering, not overly pigmented to the point where you kind of get that like butthole lip sort of thing where you can see where your natural lip color starts and ends. They look incredibly healthy on the lips and Flesh Beauty gives you a ton of product in this. I mean, look at this tube compared to some of the other tubes that we're talking about. Great color selection. I think the formula was really well thought out. They're pretty because they have a pigment to them while also having like a jelly translucence to them. It's kind of hard to describe, but I think this formula is really underrated. I would definitely recommend checking some of these out. Next, let's just talk about my Fenty gloss bombs. So I have four different shades. I have the shade Hot Chocolate. This is more of a cool brown. It actually looks a lot scarier in the tube than it actually is. This has been my favorite cool toned lip gloss and a go-to for sure. We have the OG Fenty Glow. By the way, I have an entire lip swatch video of all of the shades. This is the OG and in my opinion, my absolute favorite. It's a bronze with like a pink undertone. It is incredibly flattering on literally anyone. We also have a glass slipper, which is just a clear shade. I will swatch it anyway, even though you can't really see it. We also have diamond melt. I do have fussy, but fussy is actually at my desk. And like a lot of you, I have not been to my place of work in about two months because even though I am an essential worker, I haven't been in office. There's no reason for me to be in office right now. And there is diamond milk there at the bottom. I have talked about this formula many times, so I won't stick here for too long. 
So the reason I really love the Fenty Gloss Balm formula is for multiple reasons. One, I already mentioned that Fenty Glow is just such a unique color. I believe that Fenty does a really amazing job at formulating unique lip colors that are flattering for a lot of different people. I think that's really important. There are plenty of brands out there that are creating nude shades that just aren't flattering on a lot of people. The formula itself feels very comfortable. They aren't gloopy. They're very, very shiny though and glassy on the lips while also feeling nice. They're comfortable to wear. They definitely have that balmy quality to them. So whenever I'm wearing them, I never feel overly aware that I'm wearing them, which is really nice to be able to wear a lip product, not be able to feel the product sort of sitting on the lips. I think people enjoy these, not just for the finish because the finish is really gorgeous and glossy as I mentioned before, but just because they don't feel like your traditional lip gloss. I still feel like my favorites are Fenty Glow, Fussy, and then Hot Chocolate. I think that Glass Slipper is really pretty. I do think there are some other clear lip glosses that do just as good of a job. Maybe a lip gloss that isn't so flattering is the ColourPop So Juicy Plumping Lip Gloss. I honestly couldn't tell you why I still have this. I'm, I'm not sure why it's not in a trash can right now. This is just the thickest most cement-like lip gloss I've ever tried. Even applying it onto my hand right now, like dragging the applicator across my hands, it feels like wax. Like it feels like hot wax, like it's about to kind of pluck off all the hairs on my hand right now. I will leave the video where I did sort of a full swatch of this on my lips because I will never put this back on my lips again. Though it gives you a very ultra shiny look, anytime that you move the lips, your lips will get stuck to each other. So maybe nice for a photo, but I just feel like living your everyday life, it's not comfortable for other glosses that can give you a super glossy and pretty shine to them without feeling so heavy and textured on the lips. I think there are better formulas out there that are at an affordable price. And for example, one could be the Essence Shine 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 Wet Look Lip Gloss. This one is one of my absolute favorites. Oh my gosh, it's night and day applying this onto my hand right now compared to the ColourPop. It's so comfortable, so smooth on the lips. It gives you a really glassy and pretty shine without feeling very goopy on the lips. Definitely more of a balmy texture with a glassy shine. So I think this is a balance that a lot of people will really enjoy. You also get a ton of product with this at an affordable price. So this is definitely one of those cases where you can save your money and get a more affordable product like this. I think a lot of people talk about this one for good reason. Only thing that I don't like as much about it is the smell is a little bit too like cherry medicinal for me, but it is one that I do still look past because I think the formula is really nice. Another one that I absolutely love is the super lustrous, the gloss from Revlon. This is actually my favorite affordable lip gloss out there. Such an underrated product. I do not know why more people don't talk about this. It's actually quite similar to the Essence Shine 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 lip gloss, but this one fills in all of my lip lines. It gives me such a glassy and a beautiful look to my lips. Truly an absolutely gorgeous lip product. If you want that ultra glassy, shiny look to your lips without feeling like your lips are weighed down by a lot of gloss. You have that huge doe foot applicator that I think is really satisfying to apply to the lips. There are also some different shades. I haven't actually tried any of the shades with pigment to them, but I am curious because I just find this formula so satisfying to apply, really comforting, everything that I would want out of a clear lip gloss. I think that this Revlon one is better than the Glass Slipper lip gloss from Fenty. So this is definitely a winner in my book. Next, we have some lip glosses from M Cosmetics. So we have some of the true glosses. These are lip glosses with pigment to them. And then we also have the Morning Dew, which is a clear lip gloss. So let's first start off with the true glosses. I have three different shades. There we are. We have Secret Blush at the top, Magic Hour, and then Faded Clementine at the bottom. My personal favorite though is Faded Clementine. This is actually one of the only pigmented glosses that I find myself reaching for quite a bit because 
because the color is just so unique. And whenever I want more of a blotted lip look, I don't want to achieve that with a lipstick. I'd rather go with a really comforting formula like the True Glosses. I will always reach for Faded Clementine. Even though it has quite a lot of pigment, you can apply it, sort of do a quick blot to the lips. You can even see as I drag my finger over this, these lip glosses are incredibly smooth. You're not going to get any gloopiness. They're almost like a liquefied lipstick with slightly more gloss to them. It's a really, really unique formula. And then we also have Morning Dew from M Cosmetics. This is an absolutely beautiful formula. It's very nourishing on the lips, really shiny and easy to work with. This to me again is another one of those lip gloss options if you hate the way that lip gloss feels but you want a glossy look to your lips. Definitely feels more on the balmy side but it still gives you a really pretty sheen and it also just feels really nice on the lips. Whenever I'm done wearing this I think my lips feel really nice afterwards. They feel like they're a little bit more nourished than a typical lip gloss. A lip gloss that I do think is nice is the NYX Lingerie Gloss. I don't have anything against the formula. I think the formula itself is actually really nice. It reminds me a lot of the Revlon gloss, but unfortunately this smell is just not up my alley. It's very, very perfumey and it's one of those fragrances that you can taste on the lips. And because it's not like a yummy sort of like cake batter sort of taste, it just kind of tastes like artificial fragrance in a way that's not pleasing. So though I think the formula is great, I think Nick should have just left the fragrance out of the picture. Next we have a couple of Dior lip products. So I have talked about the new Dior Stellar lip glosses before. This is actually one of my favorite everyday lip products at the moment. Look at that cute little doe foot applicator. It's so cute. It reminds me of like a teddy bear paw or something. This is the shade 630. It is such a perfect everyday lip color. Definitely more of a balmy lip gloss. It gives you a slight bit of pigmentation and definition to the lips. So your lips look defined, really pillowy, but it's also a very comfortable lip gloss. So this is again, really good for those of you that don't like an ultra, ultra glossy lip gloss. And then I also have this one from Dior, which I honestly keep this because this was one of the first lip glosses or really like any luxury makeup purchase that I made. And as you can see, I was kind of like scared to overuse it. And it's such like a backwards way to think like, I don't want to use it because it's special. It's only for like special occasions. I spend so much money on it. To me, now I'm like, I spent a bunch of money on it. I better use it all of the time so I get my money's worth. But I loved this formula. It was more of like a lip plumper lip gloss. I used it for a very long time. I just haven't gotten rid of it. It gave you a really like slight pink milky look to your lips without being unflattering sort of milky color. Made your lips look really big, but it wasn't overly plumping. Like it didn't really sting on the lips like a lot of lip plumpers do. To me, I preferred this to their like typical lip glow balms. I still haven't passed it along just because it reminds me of that time. Next we have what is actually on my lips today, which is the Peach Laneige Lip Glowy Balm. I recently talked about this product because I just feel like it's such a beautiful everyday lip product. It's not quite a gloss. It's something between a lip gloss and a lip balm. It gives you sort of the lip gloss look while pretty much just being a lip balm. Really nourishing on the lips and I actually adore this to wear under lipsticks. I use this almost as a primer in my makeup routine, but if I'm just hanging around the house like I've obviously been doing quite a bit now, it's been nice to just apply this. It smells like peaches, it's really delicious and fruity and it's just easy to apply to the lips and be on my way. And next we have the Rimmel Stay Glossy. Now, I actually was a really big fan of this formula. The formula is very smooth. It is not sticky whatsoever, but it still will give you a ton of shine. Very comfortable on the lips. It really has everything in a formula that I love. The formula to me feels very high end, but unfortunately, this does not smell like I would like it. It's incredibly powdery. Honestly, it reminds me of like a deodorant sort of powdery smell. That floral powdery smell that I just don't like on my lips. You can taste it on the lips, so it's just not a favorite. Love the way it looks. If it had no fragrance or a better fragrance, then I would definitely reach for this and probably repurchase, but you can kind of see now I'm not using it much. Not a fragrance that I like in my lip 
products, but I do really like the formula. And lastly, we have this lip gloss from Bite Beauty. This is the, the French press lip gloss. I think they discontinued these. Or maybe it was always meant to just be limited edition, but this is the shade Dirty Chai. And I really, really love this. So it's a shame that I think they probably discontinued this. If you want to talk about a fragrance that's really good, it would be something like this. These all smell like coffee. Really even, gorgeous pigment. Great to wear alone or over a lip liner. I've definitely worn them both ways and had really pretty looks either way. Really a nice formula, easy to wear. I will have all of these products linked down below for you guys. And then also any of the videos that I've already done on more, you know, in-depth reviews. So thanks for getting to know my collection. And if you guys want to see any more videos similar to this, definitely let me know down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one.